here we have the potential layout for a power supply for a name 282 preamp. Uh, in case you don't realize, uh, name loves to have optional power supplies with their preamps. In fact, generally speaking, except for some of the later ones, they all require an external supply of some type, either from the power amp, in which case it gets a single 12 volt supply, or from the uh, something like a, a super cap, high cap, flat cap. For example, over here, we have a name flat cap on the bottom here, which provides a single 24 volt, or it's actually dual 20 volt supply on a single cable. Uh, high cap is better than it. Um, and generally speaking, names power supplies are pretty crappy, especially the older ones. They were just based on, on very standard LM387, no, 317. Yeah, anyway, standard off-the-shelf regulators, nothing special, uh, cost a lot for a nice box, uh, which is fine. People like them, and they, they definitely improved the, 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 the show, but what I'm building today will uh, far exceed anything you'd even get, even from a SuperCap. Um, this is the basic concept. We need to have two uh, five-pin cables uh, with uh, 24 volts each, uh, for the 82 or 282. We also need an NAPSC power supply, which is for the control circuitry. Uh, that is 18 volts. Um, and that's just for things like the volume knob, motor, uh, remote control circuitry, uh, relays, that kind of thing. Uh, that doesn't need to be great power, but, uh, but having a little regulator is fine just to have it consistent and that has to be 18 volts. So, um, and then I've got a, a few extra goodies that I will touch upon as we go along. Uh, this case is a repurposed um, amplifier case, power amp case. So you'll notice the, the, the two banana plug uh, connectors in the back for the, speak, uh, the speaker uh, binding posts uh, that we we're using for output. And of course, two RCA inputs. Uh, those will be replaced uh, to repurpose to some extent. Um, in terms of the flow here, we have power coming in. Um, probably come back to this point, I probably will add a soft start module because I think the total transformers in here is about 180, 190 volt amps. And generally over 100 volt amps, it's good to add a, um, a soft start module just to, to be a little nicer. Um, this is a little 10 volt amp uh, transformer. I just happen to have kicking around, which is perfectly fine, as well as a little module here. You'll notice that it has a uh, a small little uh, full wave bridge rectifier uh, and a capacitor um, and uh, and then a basic regulator circuit. I can adjust that to be 18 volts. Uh, that's perfect for the job. For the NEPSC, I'll probably have its output go right over in the corner here just because there's space for it there. Uh, and it doesn't care if it's close to the mains because it's just basic 18 volts, yeah, whatever. Uh, and now we come back to here. Of course, we've got the switch up front, which is quite handy. Up here in the front corner is a good spot for it. Uh, here we have four identical transformers. Each of those is 43 volt amps. Um, and you'll notice that I have them uh, positioned alternating so that they do not impact each other with their magnetic fields. Um, uh, this is a generally a uh, well-considered way of doing it. It'll require a little bit of trickery for mounting because, of course, they want to mount to the bottom of the chassis like this guy has here. Um, and with the mounting brackets on the side, I'll just put some little L brackets in uh, to hold it in place. Should work fine. Um, the uh, regulating it all, these are shunt regulators. They can uh, uh, provide as much as 350 volt amps per channel. So there's one, two, three, four channels total. Uh, so potentially about 1400 milliamps. Um, and uh, I think we'd be good for each of those uh, to be, uh, to have even a, say, a th I think it was a 13 milliamp, or sorry, a 13 volt amp transformer, I figured out, but I figured let's go three times that. So we're at 43 volt amps. These are Hammonds uh, that I'm using, uh, 24 volt AC secondaries. Uh, they will come up to, uh, we have one, two, three, four, uh, Avondale uh, full wave bridge rectifiers. Uh, these little guys are the latest and greatest uh, with uh, surface mount shot key uh, diodes on there uh, and do a lovely job of very quickly uh, rectifying the incoming AC. We're going then into two pairs uh, on each side of uh, capacitors for smoothing. Uh, these are 3,300 uh, microfarads each. 
I think 63 volts, if I recall correctly, uh, voltage-wise. Um, and they have, uh, uh, they're going to have a shared ground on each side, well, on this side and on this side, uh, although they will represent two completely independent supplies. You'll notice between each bank of caps, I'm using a 12 micro Henry inductor. Uh, so it's basically a CLC uh, smoothing arrangement, arrangement filter, uh, which should provide a fairly quiet uh, smoothing to begin with. Uh, and then it goes into the uh, Avondale ASR2 shunt regulators. I believe these use a current source and not a resistor uh, to, uh, to set their, uh, their, their output uh, so that they are uh, cranking along at, at good measure. So they're always ready to go with 350 milliamps, even though the amps probably will be drawing 20 milliamps, maybe 20 uh, is the expectation. So uh, seriously over-engineered, uh, but should make for very, very, very quiet sound. Um, then uh, this is the, the fun little bit in the side. Uh, we've been playing with the idea of um, buffers. Uh, and this is a universal buffer from Eurochrome. Uh, we've discovered that because they have exceedingly low uh, output impedance and, and, uh, and very healthy input impedance, they're very easy to drive. And they're also exceedingly good as far as on, on the output side. I, apparently they are less than one ohm output impedance, which is just insanely amazing. Uh, I have tried these things uh, between gear and uh, th there are some combinations where these things just do wonders. They're uh, mostly transparent as far as I can tell uh, from an acoustic perspective, but anytime I put one in, it's made it sound better and not worse. Uh, so uh, it's just a matter of deciding whether or not they're even worthwhile on the circuit. And I've decided I'm probably gonna build this thing with two of these in place. Uh, this one little power supply also from Neurochrome uh, can easily drive two of these, if not probably three, um, so uh, it, or more possibly. So I should be good for, for driving them both from this one supply. Uh, and they, um, uh, what we're planning on doing is, as I say, uh, our main power supply, we're going to have the NAPSC over here. Uh, we'll probably repurpose, um, we, we need two five-pin DIN cables, so we'll probably blank up one of these uh, on, on one side and then make the other one into a, uh, a name five-pin DIN, similar with here, name five-pin DIN. Um, we'll likely reuse these things because these buffers are going to be used in two ways. They will be used potentially as a buffer for the source, between the source and the preamp, which means that it would come from the Ferrum Wandla DAC, it's XLRs, because I think the XLRs sound better. I haven't completely confirmed that yet, but they do seem to sound better in the, the tests I've done so far. We've got a few more just to confirm that 100%. So XLRs could potentially come bang and bang, left and right. Uh, and then coming out, we could either have two RCAs for left and right to go into the 282 because the 282 does have a um, uh, RCA inputs. If it was for an 82, it does not. So I probably will also put a name five pin, 180 degree DIN connector here, hooked with that in parallel, so that it'll drive all of that together. This buffer would have no difficulty driving both at the same time. If you wanted to, to for example, you know, drive two preamps if you wanted to, or <laughs> just peachy. So no issues with having both connectors on the output there. Um, and then on the other side, it is potentially the, uh, the signal coming from the 282 preamp into the power amp. In this case, it's going to be an Avondale uh, NCC 300 dual mono. Um, and I've tried driving that amp with one of these universal buffers, and it seems to do a lovely job. Uh, so uh, then, so we've got the XLRs, RCAs, and then named in, and then probably have um, on this side, because it's coming from the 282 or an 82, it's going to be a four pin a DIN coming uh, from this, which is, I think, a 204 degree, I think it's 204 degree DIN. But either way, it's the standard four pin DIN that comes out of the, uh, the power amp output socket uh, for the name preamps. And then going out, uh, it would be two RCA uh, jacks on this side. Uh, for the uh, to drive the NCC 300 because it is not balanced. Uh, so there you go. That's the whole shebang uh, in a nutshell. Uh, I think it should be amazing when it's done. Talk to you later.